Yeah, so the first thing that I did on these guys was uh, when I got my FTDI cable, uh, I just downloaded the, the drivers that they had, Blue Max 49ers. They're great for cables. Um, I just downloaded their driver for the FTDI, and it worked great right out of the package. Um, so anyway, I will, uh, oh, like I was saying, I saved both of the files separately with both these radios um, to make sure that I had the original code plug put into them, and I kept track which one was which. And then after that, I felt a little more comfortable tinkering around. So just to make sure, because I've changed so many settings here. I'll plug in what's my transmitting radio. Go on over to here. I'm going to just close this because I just saved it. That's the last known working. I'm going to go ahead and read device. And it is on COM6. Give that a second. Uh, they say it's always best to do this um, while there's going to be no traffic. But um, I don't think there will be any traffic on my repeater here. So cross our fingers. So that's normal. All right. So let's see here. Well, before I even get digging in. Because I'll be enticed to change some things. I will go ahead and file. I will save this as. And I like that number there because it always gives me a reference uh, for later. What this is called. And I'm going to call this TX Repeater Working. Just TXRP. Yeah, sorry, I always use an old laptop, like I said, and these buttons are so sticky. TXRP working. Almost just typed in my name there. Alright, go ahead and save that. And then, next thing I'll do... Is... I'm going to drop that down just so I can keep it up. I'm going to go ahead and read the next radio. Oh yeah, that's going to close that one. That's fine. Doesn't really say much. Almost couldn't even tell the radio is doing anything. And Good here. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and save as. Do I have a 134? I'll call that repeater. RX. So it took quite a bit of tinkering around here. Um, I had to learn, you know, obviously the, the conventional personality. Make that a little bigger. So the first thing when I got these radios uh, that confused me the most was the, the trunking personalities. So I went ahead and I just deleted all of them but one. You always got to keep the one on there. 
and no matter what I did, uh, I tried everything. I could not get these radios to just switch into the analog conventional mode. And I was about ready to think that I bought a couple bricks for my needs and I just hunkered down to some YouTube videos and, you know, the threads. And I found the little secret, which is... Unplug that. And then it's, it's rather tricky is what you gotta do. You gotta have a microphone in there. And then you'll hold, you'll turn the radio off, you'll hold, you know, your microphone key, and then you're going to try to get another couple fingers in to hold these first two buttons, one and two. At the same time, turn the radio on with, I guess, your other hand or your foot, whatever you got available. And, uh, well, we'll try to demonstrate it, I guess. It's really kind of a pain in the butt. See if I can even do it here on command. Hopefully it doesn't mess with any of my settings. Uh, but like I said, if it does, I always have the uh, that file saved. So since the RX was the last one I messed with, power that guy down. Eh, I guess for another quick demonstration. See, I was messing with some buttons, and I didn't know. Somehow I accidentally got back into a zone that I didn't want to be in. Um, you know, because that can happen if you hit the zone button. Left and right. Oh, actually, while I'm in this mode, it actually seems to be locked out. But, say somehow it did happen. down find the best way you can to hold the microphone the one and the two and then try to power that guy back up and it can be tricky especially if your radio is loose like mine is so let's make it a little more difficult here Keep holding them until it comes on. It'll beep at you. A couple things will come on, and then you'll let off. And that'll put it back into conventional mode. But anyway, so just a couple little tidbits of information I found. Um, then we, I guess, we need to dig into radio configuration, uh, accessory pins, and we were on the receive radio. See, I just left them on default. Uh, on receive radio, you got your PTT input and PL squelch, talk group, and et cetera, on the output uh, low level. And then, oops, uh, I just changed that. Well, that's not good. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and close that. Not going to save. I didn't like that at all. Open that back up. Boy, that'll be a big cut and edit. So let's see here. I had my transmit repeater working. RX work. That'll be the one. Worst thing about using track pads is especially out here in a cold garage. Oh, got something coming in. Huh. Just a local ham repeater there. Radio configuration. Accessory pins. Yeah, so that's basically what you're looking at. Um, if you want to see any of these other ones. I didn't mess with much in here. Uh, I did do some messing around with the option board. That's what I came up with there with lots of tinkering. And once again, half of the time, uh, some of the tinkering I did might have been unnecessary because I actually had those um, interface cables upside down because uh, they did 
a wonderful justice of putting the sticker on what you would think would be the top, uh, but definitely not because your, um, your even pins are all on the top and your odd pins are all on the bottom. Oh uh, yeah, nothing else I changed in there. Home revert, that always got me. Uh, so anything I didn't know about, I just turned it off and then I would try it. Uh, I would never change more than one or two things at a time and then read it to a radio and and see what it does and then another handy feature and I found this by changing too many things at once is up here they have fields modified it'll give you a history and also invalid fields and why that's important is because when you go to write the radio uh, if there's anything invalid, it won't work. So, a good double check to make sure you don't have any invalid fields. And if you do, you're going to have to correct those. And then it does have some, some help for that as well. So, due to last user input. Also, if you check in on this after every input, you'll know right when you've made a mistake. So, that can also be handy as well. But anyway... So that was most of my receive setup, and then on the transmit side, oh my gosh, I just clicked something I didn't, why did I do that? Of course I couldn't open the port. Let's just close out of those icons with this tap. That is, uh, that is dangerous when you're using a trackpad. Gotta go very gently. I'm gonna have to turn my sensitivity down on that, but I don't think these old things had it. So, transmit. Transmit, we got accessory pins, uh, default, and just your pin three on that one and I don't think I changed anything else there oh yeah another thing I guess to go over transmit power uh, it's always good to turn it down a bit if you ever think you're gonna be rag chewing but if you're just doing a little bit of work with it or out camping or whatever keep it up high yeah it won't hurt it these things these radios have already been used and abused pretty hard uh, option board I did simple option interface Oh yeah, mic audio writing. That's also an important one I might have left out on the receive. Uh, so internal mic audio is what you want. And that's on both of them, I believe. Um, gosh, I guess I'll have to double check. Uh, I'll have to see if there's anything else. I did keep track of it. So anyway, I'll update if there's anything else. I guess a quick test we can do. So I got my... Passport RX. I believe I'd made that receive only just so that you couldn't key up on it. Um, and then I got TX here. I'll just do a quick key up. WSAK 418 monitoring. I heard that clicking out of something. Yep. Got the old trusty bow fang. Now, it's not much of a test if I'm just doing it from the radios to a HT here, so I guess I'll just put this guy. Turn him up a little bit. I don't know if you can tell. do I have here? Sure got another HT on me. Oh yeah, the TID radio. That's probably what's been chirping. Make sure we're on that. WSAK 418 wandering. Oh, I, can, I can hear myself parroting over there. Let's watch these guys while I key up. 
WSAK 418 monitoring. Yeah, nothing else too crazy. Guess we can come over here and see if we see anything. WSAK 418 monitoring. Yeah, well, that's about it. Um, I'm sure I've left something out, and this will probably just be my initial video, and I will definitely do a second one with some of the, the other little details that I know I left out, and I'm sure I didn't go through all there. I'll probably do that on my home computer, uh, so I can at least open the files up, and I won't do it with any radios connected. Anyway, 73s, uh, WSAK 418, I'll be on the side.